Here we are at the Fearless Entrepreneur Summit. We really had a, a great event. You know, if you weren't able to attend in person and you're watching the replay, thank you so much for coming back and watching the replays. Hasn't it been amazing? The speakers have been absolutely incredible. We've had so much knowledge bombs dropped on us and we're about to have some more of those come up right now with our next speaker, Missy Holder. Now I met Missy, I believe, Missy, did we meet on Clubhouse? We did, we did, we met on Clubhouse. Oh my gosh, it it's so awesome because you never know what's gonna happen when you meet somebody, right? And Missy, we really hit it off because like I'm all about, you know, breaking through fears and Missy's gonna share a little bit of her story, but you know, she she's all about that too, is helping people to break through their fears. She's a business coach and she is here to share with us today that how goal setting doesn't work. She says, goal setting doesn't work for me. So I'm not sure if that's me or her, but we're gonna find out <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> Might be both, right? <laughs> Might be both. Go ahead, Missy, you have the floor. I have the floor. Okay, well, I'm gonna share my screen because I prepared a presentation. So let's go to that guy, share my screen. Okay, Linda, can you see my screen? I just want to yes. verify. Yes. Okay, yeah. perfect. So we're going to talk today about goal setting. And I say it doesn't work for me. And maybe it doesn't work for you too. But I wanted to talk about how you can make progress towards your goals, even if all the other goal setting methods haven't worked for you. So a little bit about me. I'm Missy. As Linda said, I am a business coach. I um, I like to take what my experiences in accounting, I've, I'm a lifelong accountant and I've worked in businesses my entire life and my love of personal finance. I have uh, gone back and gotten like my financial coach master training. So I love personal finance. So kind of mixing both of those worlds, leveraging them and helping female entrepreneurs to understand and become empowered by their business and personal finances so that they can create a business that is in alignment with their goals, hopes, and dreams so that they can create the, um, they, their business can help create the life that they want. So that's a little bit about me and let's move on to the next slide. So I wanted to talk a little bit about why goals don't work and what to do instead. So for me, I've always, I felt goals were either too big or too small. So, and therefore weren't motivating as a result. So I kind of like to think of it as the Goldilocks principle. So, um, you know, sometimes I'll pick goals and they just will seem so lofty that they're almost demotivating or they're too small, which I feel like I can kind of let them go, let them slide. And therefore they're also not motivating. Um, or I might pick a goal that's not necessarily aligned with my purpose. It might be someone else's goal for me. And so that goal doesn't work for me. I'm not motivated. Um, I feel like goals, just the way that in their, you know, the way you think of them in their conventional sort uh, are, they're just too focused on the end result. They're too rigid and unchanging and they don't allow for time for reflection or refinement. And I think um, what I refer to as draft mode, like considering the things that the things you want to accomplish as in um, draft mode and in, in allowing them to change and evolve over time, um, that creates a lot of freedom for me. So uh, that's one thing that I've uh, embedded into my intention setting practice, which we'll talk about in just a second. And then I think goals just in their normal, the way you know people tend to talk about goal setting, um, you don't enjoy the process. You're so focused on the end product that you forget to enjoy the process and you don't celebrate your progress along the way. So in this presentation, we're gonna talk about setting your intentions instead of uh, goal setting. So I'm saying set your intentions so that you can win your weeks and um, have you know, start really truly hitting the milestones and the aspirations that you have in your business and in your personal life. 
In this presentation, we're going to talk about intention and what I mean by intention. I'm going to go through the six step intention setting process that I go through every week. I do this every single week. Ever since I've done it, it has been game changing for my business and my personal life. Um, I'm going to talk about lead indicators versus lag indicators. What are they and which one should you focus on? We're going to talk about um, tips for success and potential pitfalls that you might encounter along the way. So when I say intention, what do I mean? So intention is the purposeful use or investment of your time and energy, which we can all agree are limited, finite resources. Um, it's a way to free yourself from saying yes to everything and thereby overextending yourself. I mean, I don't know about you. I mean, you guys were just talking about all the distractions and in, um, in the online space in particular. I mean, shiny object syndrome, anyone? So um, it's a way to say yes to the things that are important to you and saying no to all the other things. And it's a way to stay in alignment with your deepest values so that you can stay on track. And if you're not sure of what your deepest values are, I would definitely spend time focusing on what your core values are, what your purpose and what your deepest values or core values are so that you can create intentions that are in alignment with those. Because once you kind of have that mapped up as such, that's when you can really gain a lot of traction. So I'm going to go through the process that I go through every Sunday. Um, I do it in my business basics for female business owners, Facebook group. You are more than welcome. Anyone on this call that wants to join, I do it every Sunday from two to three Eastern Standard Time. So two to three, and we walk through um, the six step intention setting process. And it's a lot of like, I tell you, do a little talking, set a timer, we do work. I do work, I work right alongside you because I literally do this every Sunday right alongside you. And then we come back, uh, answer questions, set the next stage and go on. Um, and it's very, it, it takes an hour, but it, it really does reap rewards beyond that hour. Um, so the process, the first step in the six step intention setting process is to set your direction. So I like to think of this as your like your big picture goals. So this would be identifying the things that you want to happen within that week. And um, they would be your big, big action items. Um, so it could be like, I want to grow my email list. I want to um, engage in, uh, I want to lose two pounds. I'm just gonna like throw out some <laughs> different examples other than business. Um, I like to think of it as like traveling to Florida, for example. Um, this having a direction set will keep you focused on getting to where you're headed. You might have a different course. Like for me, I live in Ohio. If I were going to Florida, um, I might go down, you know, a route and then ways might tell me to go off course a little bit, but all the while I'm still heading towards Florida. Um, this would not be a time to stop along the way and take a three-day mountain excursion. That's going to get me off track. I'm not going to make it to my destination. So very similarly to that analogy of traveling to Florida, I want you to think of your intentions as setting the direction and setting the stage for your week. So if you say, I want to do X, Y, and Z for this week, if someone says something that wasn't on your radar, like, hey, you should take a Pinterest course, or hey, Linda, you should take this TikTok course or whatever, you would say, no, it's kind of equivalent to the mountains. Wow, that's a beautiful destination, a beautiful thing to do. I need to do it when I have planned to do so because that's shiny object syndrome and that's gonna keep you from getting where you wanna go. So we would, in the intention setting practice, spend about five minutes just writing down your big picture goals, not saying exactly how you're gonna get there, but what do you want to accomplish in the upcoming week? The second step is to determine your action steps. So I actually, I don't know, well, I'm not on camera. So um, I would then like from my big 
picture goals. I would then identify without filtering, I would spend about 10 minutes thinking of all of the ways that I could accomplish the actions or the direction that I want to get. So in the event of say like, um, I want to uh, lose two pounds, we'll use a personal example. I wanna lose two pounds. Um, what are all the ways that I could do that? I could commit to um, walking four days a week. I could reduce my calories um, by a certain number. I could start tracking all of my calories in my fitness pal. I could get an accountability partner or whatever. You could like generate a list of unfiltered ideas of how you could get to that goal. And so that would be step two. So determining your action steps. Um, step three would be to integrate with your calendar. So then you have to look at what you actually have time to do. So, um, and then schedule time to actually make these things happen. So if you realize, like for me, I have a son, he plays basketball. So a lot of times I will think I need to get this, this, and this accomplished. And, but my son has three games this week. So that means I have three evenings that are shot. Then I would have to look at my calendar and say, when can I get them done? Can I do them at lunch? Can I do this at, you know, get up early and get these things accomplished? You know, figure out within my, the construct of my real life, um, when can I get these items done? I tend to like to schedule blocks of time without like, earmarking specifically what I'm going to do um, in a particular time. So say I'm going to do it between 5 and 7 a.m. I decide I'm going to get up one morning and really knock stuff out. I will literally schedule in my calendar time to work on my business. And then I will give myself the freedom to choose what I want to do that's on my list, my action steps that I decided I wanted to take. I would um, then give myself freedom to choose which ones feel like I want to do at that time. So I like to call it um, freedom or like structured freedom, if that makes sense. So um, anyway, then I would no, step four is set your targets. So I'm going to pop over to the next screen to show you a little bit about what I mean by what kind of targets you want to do. So um, the actions, going back to step two, I want you to focus on actions that you have control over. So a lot of times I've been talking about, like say, growing your email list. Um, that is not necessarily something you can control, like having more people sign up for your email list. Um, that's an outcome. So that would be called a leg indicator or an end result. But what you can do to create the, the result are your lead indicators. These are the things I want you to focus on. So how can you generate more people to your, or drive more people to your email list is you could create a freebie. You could then um, make sure everyone knows about your freebie. How can you make sure people know about your freebie? These are actions you can take. You can email your list and provide a link so that they could click on it. You could promote it via Facebook post or Instagram post. You could promote your lead magnet into groups like this, speaking at summits. You could promote your lead magnet um, in, oh gosh, I'm like drawing a blank. Oh, Facebook groups, like different Facebook groups. You could post and say, yeah, like, hey, I've got this great lead magnet. Are you, are you interested? If so, click here and then have a link. That's something you can control and hopefully those actions will produce the results that you want. But I want you to track, that's where I'm gonna go back to setting your targets. I want you to track the things that, the actions that you are taking. So if you say, I'm going to reach out to, or okay, I'm gonna promote a lead magnet, and then I'm gonna promote it into five Facebook groups this week. I'm gonna post about it in my email list, and I'm gonna do four, promo post on Facebook this week. Once you, those are your targets. Those are the actions you can take. As you take them, start ticking them off. Yep, did it once, twice, third time, etc. So you're tracking what you're actually doing. And then um, that's where you're gonna be 
hopefully making progress throughout the week. That's step five. That's actually doing the work. And then at the end of the week, review how you did. So look at, you know, your email list, for example, to use that example, that example that I keep talking about. Um, at the beginning of the week, say you had a thousand people on your email list, you do all of these actions to hopefully drive traffic to your email list and get signups. Then I want you to review your week and see where you are. So a thousand at the beginning of the week, 1200 at the end of the week, you had a net gain of 200 email subscribers and you would have to determine, is that good? Is that not good? In my book, that would be amazing, worth celebrating. And then you would have feedback that the action that you took, the lead indicators produced the desired result that you wanted, the lag indicator. So that's a little bit about the six step process. Now, here are some tips for success. I want you to write things down. I literally use um, my, <coughs> I use my iPad and I write things down and circle things and tick mark and all of that. When you write your things, write things down, um, the stat that I've heard is that you're 42% more likely to hit your goals or intentions and uh, get the results that you want just by writing them down. Something happens in your brain and it makes you, it, it just makes it more real and um, intentional. The second thing to help set yourself up for success is to create a space for success. So what that means for me is I turn on um, like some focus music and it's almost like I have a Pavlovian response where when this certain music comes on, I know it's time to get serious. I will turn off notifications on my phone. So I'll engage or um, put focus mode on my phone. So I'm not getting pinged all the time with notifications. I will minimize the tabs on my um, computer and literally just try to put those blinders on, create my space so that I'm set up for success so I can get stuff done. Um, make sure that you're working in alignment with your values. I mentioned that early on, if you're not really sure what your values or your core, you know, your core values are, um, do some thinking on that, write things down, what's important to you. Um, an example would be if you have a core value of, I want to spend time with my family in the evenings, then you want to make sure that you are setting your intentions and scheduling time with family at night. Otherwise you're gonna drain all of your energy. You're not being a very intentional. Well, you're, you're just not creating intention that is in alignment with your values if you're choosing to work at night when um, that's not what you want. It's probably not a long lasting strategy. The fourth thing is to utilize the Pareto principle, which is an economic principle that has application in other areas. It's often referred to as the 80-20 rule, which basically means that 80% of your outputs or results are a result of, or come from 20% of your inputs or your actions. So if that's the case, 80% of your results come from 20% of your work, then focus your time on those 20% activities because they're producing a lot of results. So utilize that Pareto principle um, to really leverage your time and energy. Focus on one thing at a time so that you minimize, you know, minimize those distractions um, and just don't get overwhelmed. I think a lot, that's one of the things that, you know, when I started my business, I would try to do too many things at once and it just doesn't work. So focus on one thing at a time to maximize your time and more importantly, your energy. I think that's one thing that we tend to neglect when we consider um, how we utilize our time. Create structure in your life. I mentioned this where I schedule time blocks and um, I, I literally will put it in my calendar. If I don't put it in my calendar, like work on business, 
go for a run or whatever, it's not going to happen. So create that structure and schedule in your life to maximize success. Expect delays in your progress. So this is a process. Um, you're going to run into some resistance. Things maybe don't work. I want you to approach that with compassionate curiosity as to why didn't this work for me? Um, what can I do instead? I mean, if you're saying, hey, I'm going to schedule every morning, I schedule time to, to, to work on my business between 5 and 7 a.m. And you run into resistance with that, you know, it's okay. Maybe five and five to seven, just maybe it works for someone else, but it doesn't work for you. And that's okay. Be curious about why it's not working. And it's okay to recognize like, hey, I'm not a morning person. So to think that I'm going to be able to do that when it just doesn't jive with me is fine. Just figure out what works for you and know that this is a process. Um, routinely evaluate effectiveness. So think about what's working, what's not very similar to the expecting delays to, um, to be mindful that this is a process and figure out what works for you, what, what um, actions are actually creating the results that you want. Do you like doing those actions? Um, they might not be worth the results that you're getting. Uh, just is this effective? Is it not? It's not good. It's not bad. I want you to think in terms of effective um, or ineffective. And if it's not working, don't do it. Change it up. That's okay, this is your process. Find an accountability partner. So much like writing things down, which I said had your 42% more likely to hit your um, goals or aspirations, if you write things down, finding an accountability partner is even more effective. I've read stats of 80% and even higher, um, you know, increasing the likelihood of hitting your your goals or intentions just by having an accountability partner. So this is like um, adding gas to the fire. So um, find that person that you can chat with and, you know, you say, I'm going to get this done. You know, like I said, my intention setting work sessions every week, you're more than welcome to go to those. I could be your accountability partner, even just showing up for that and reviewing can hold you accountable. Um, and you're more likely to get what you want to get done, done, if you routinely engage in a process like that. I love this quote by Stephen Covey. The key is not to prioritize what's on your schedule, but to schedule your priorities. So get it on your calendar. If it's important to you and it's aligned with your core values and it's going to get you where you want to go, schedule it, schedule your priorities. And what's next? So if you wanted um, to chat with me, you could join our um, my community. We're female entrepreneurs. It's called the Business Basics for Female Business Owners on Facebook. It's a private group. And that's where I have the intention setting work sessions every Sunday from two to three Eastern Standard Time. Um, you can chat with me on Clubhouse. I'm actually gonna do a lot more rooms uh, with people uh, about money topics. A lot of times I'll speak on midlife, women and midlife topics, um, but anything, limiting beliefs, money blocks, business stuff, all the things, um, goal setting, check me out, try to find me on Clubhouse. That's where I found Linda. Um, if you wanna talk about things with respect to your business or your personal finances, or how, you know, I mean, they all get kind of muddied together, business and personal finances, um, schedule a discovery call. It's missyholder.com is my website. And you could schedule that. I have free um, discovery calls. I stop my share. Oh, am I on now? I see you. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. That's a little bit. That's all. That's all I have today, Linda. Fantastic. That was amazing. I got lots of great notes on this. And as I mentioned earlier, I said it seemed that today's theme was intention, intention, intention. You know, so word just keeps coming up is intention is extremely important. So why don't you share with us, um, you know, how you 
came to that conclusion that setting the intention is so important and like what was that that pivotal moment for you and then made you decide to to go with it you know because we can know the word but are we actually taking action on it yeah no atten- intention is actually my word of 2022 so i love it i feel like it's purposeful and in alignment those are my th- i i was really torn between all of those words but to me intention is purposeful and aligned action towards my goals. And um, so I love the word intention just because it feels, um, I don't know, it feels like it's just, I'm struggling to think of the words right now, but just because it's, we have such limited time, you know, and I just want to be very mindful of using that time wisely and using that time so that it creates the results I want. And so it creates the life I want. So if I'm, I feel like I've spent a lot of time personally, especially in business, like doing all these other things and not knowing what's important to me, you know, because what works for you might not work for me. Um, And so if I'm very intentional about how I want to like align things, my time, my energy, my money um, with who I am, who I'm, you know, that feels authentic, aligned and um, purposeful to me. That's where intention comes in. Yeah, I know that when um, when I did the clubhouse challenge, that was something I was like, you, before you go into a room, set an intention before you create a club, set an intention because intention is very it helps us to drive us to in the right direction. And if we go into something without intention, we might not end up like you mentioned, you know, about the GPS going to Florida. If you decide to take a side trip, you know, like hiking you know, the mountains for three days, it's going to take you off course. So yeah. you've set an intention, but you didn't fulfill that intention, you know? So I think it, just knowing our intention is extremely beneficial. So Missy, what was the name of your Facebook group that you mentioned? It's called the business basics for female business owners. So go ahead and put a, a link to you know, in the chat for us to join that. And what was, you mentioned um, the process that you go through, you know, the the one through six, set your direction, determine your action steps, integrate with your calendar, set your targets, make progress and review your week. You said you host this on Sundays, every Sunday at what time? Two to three Eastern standard time. Two to three Eastern standard time. And that is inside of your group, right? It is. It is. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Well, if anybody has any questions, please, you know, unmute yourself, raise your hand or put the question in the chat there. And I want to thank you. This was great. Oh, oh, I do have a question. Yeah. Um, you mentioned again, those first, those first six items that you were mentioning that I just stated, you know, set your direction, yeah. what have you. I'm just curious, how much time do you spend each week just on that little process? Because like reviewing your week, how much time do you set aside to review your previous week? Yeah. So like each so, of those steps, how much time do you take? Literally the whole process, I will get it done in that hour. So from two to three, I get it done. So it takes, it takes an hour. And, um, I try to keep it very concise intentionally so that I'm not like spending a lot of time overthinking. I mean, I can, I'm the best at overthinking. So by having that confined amount of time it keeps me focused. So one hour and it proves to be super, um, helpful. I mean, I wanted, I don't know if you can see this, but yeah, like, so I will create my list of what I want to do my, and then I'll circle the action items that I want to take and then tick them off as I do them throughout the week. And then start with reviewing, like, how did I do for the week? Did I did the things that I did? create the results that I wanted. And so if they don't like, um, say I spent a ton of time on TikTok and I'm like, I really want to drive people to my email list and I spent all this time on TikTok, but I didn't get any new subscribers to my email list. I'm probably not going to spend a lot of time on that unless I decide that I was in the wrong, in front of the wrong audiences or whatever on TikTok and I need to change my strategy. So I think unless you measure, which a lot of people tend to be afraid of measuring results, um, unless you measure, you don't know how effective what you're doing is. So 
I don't know. You just want, I look at everything almost like a machine and I want to optimize the dials that are creating the outputs that I want. And um, I want to focus on the ones that are the biggest needle mover, needle movers, you know, the bigger dials that create the results I want. And if I find that TikTok or whatever is, you know, generating a lot of views, but that's not generating into leads or sales, then I'm probably not going to spend time on it. Yeah, I love this. Um, as you were speaking, I wrote down this saying my mom used to say to me all the time. And if she were alive, she'd probably still be saying it to me. And that's the hurrieder, I, the hurrieder I go, the behind her I get. <laughs> and, and I think what she was referring to there, like I never understood it really fully until, uh, you know, talking about that stopping and reviewing. Yeah. And because we can say, you know, I got to do this, I got to do that. And, and we're always like looking forward at what we got to do the goddess, and then forget to look to see if all those things that we got to do that we made ourselves do, did, were they effective? Right. And exactly. that's what the review period is all about. And, you know, I'm guilty at not doing that and guilty at just, you know, commonly just moving forward, feeling like I got to keep moving forward. But here's the thing yeah. is if I were to stop and take time to review, could I move forward faster? Yeah, most likely. Yes. Actually, it's arguably the most important step, right? And it tends to be skipped. I think the other thing that is often neglected about that step is if things are effective, it's really fun to celebrate. And that's the part, um, I think so many times people get so focused, this is why I don't like goal setting in its traditional sense, you get so focused on this end result that you forget to stop and celebrate and enjoy the process and celebrate your wins along the way. You know, so that's another really important piece of the review process is celebrate those wins, however small or big they are. And what I love about this is, um, you know, join us, join us on those Sundays. I'm going to check my calendar when we're done here to make sure I, you, you said it was two um, Eastern, yep. two to three so Eastern, what, 11, to 12, 11 to 12. Yeah. So I'm going to check my calendar. And if if it does work, I'm going to be attending those because again, that, you know, just having that accountability, that one hour to show up and, and you might look at your calendar and say, well, I don't really know if I want to fit that in. But the thing is that if it's going to help you to move your business forward faster, and you're going to, you know, remove the fluff, the things that aren't working, and it's you know just going to help you to keep that intention. And then it gives you that, that um, time, that time frame to really review, to see what's working and what's not working. And then that couples yep. on to mine, you know, the do it, delegate it or dump it. If it's not working, dump it, you yep. know, it's, yeah. So join us. I'm, I'm excited to, I didn't know you were doing this, Missy. So I'm super yeah, excited. No, I'm, that, I would love to have you. I, yeah. I Seriously, if no one comes, I still do it. I still do it because it has been game changing for me. I'm not trying to overstate it but it's true. It has been game changing for me. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to do it. I want to thank you so much for, for being oh, here welcome. and sharing your, your, your knowledge. And, um, it, it is just, this has been a great summit. I've really enjoyed it. I love how all these talks are, are interwoven. Sally says, yeah, they really were like, you know, all the talks, you know, the fearless entrepreneurs, you know, this is a book that, that we put together, you know, sharing all these entrepreneurs, their stories of entrepreneurship how they've had challenges during the journey. You know, we all have challenges and then, but how they, how they overcame those challenges to move to the next step. And so what we did is we brought together the speakers, I mean, sorry, the, the authors of the book invited them to share their knowledge in a summit. So here's how, how we did this is, you know, brought everybody together, the people who wanted to be on the committee to help us. They came together and we all said, okay, what's a topic that is a common theme that we can all talk about? And that was how we came up with the title of this summit, you know, the, the time management basically. And so it's really cool how, you know, you, you're in a sphere of influence with people. You're doing something together. We're collaborating in a book. Now we're collaborating on a summit. You know, I'm all about collaboration, you know, bringing people together to, especially to share their stories with the world. But I want it to be like, I don't want it to end just because we put a book out, just because we hit that number one, just because we came an international best-selling book, it doesn't end there, right? So we keep it going. And that's one thing I want to stress that, that we do at Action Takers Publishing. So with that said, if you want to be part of what we're doing, please join us, actiontakerspublishing.com slash authors. I put the link 
in the chat here. If you're watching us live right now, that that uh, 50% off, I'm offering 50% off to join us in one of the books. Fearless 50 is the code. That code is going to expire at the end of today. So please, if you're going to take advantage, do it now. Do it now. The price will go up at the end of today. So um, I hope you enjoyed the Fearless Entrepreneur Summit. Hope you got a lot out of it. You know, it's sponsored by Action Takers Publishing. And we're so honored and blessed to have all of you be here. And you know, here's the thing. When we, when we put ourselves out there into the world, that's when we make an impact. So if you want to make a greater impact, you got to put yourself out there. Set that intention. Like we talked about intention. It was really, really our big word of the day today. Yesterday's big word of the day was making a decision. But we make a decision, we set an intention. We set an intention, we make a decision, right? They kind of go hand in hand. So super excited to see what all you are, you have planning. And uh, Missy, please drop that link to your Facebook group right there. I have this on my calendar, you know, Sundays, 11 to 12 Pacific, two to three Eastern. And I'm gonna, you know, gonna blow it up this year in Missy's group. I'm super excited about it. And again, remember, go get your free gifts. They're all available to you guys for forever. And um, looking forward to, to seeing what you all do. Does anybody have any thoughts? I